Listen, you do your thing and just love me for do mine. Your thing? Fucking call it weed and song system, your thing? Yeah, I'm on the herbs, man, and use a white rum and betting shop, man. So what I'm to that, everything I call? Well, it's also it's very much worth talking about Babylon as a first-generation story. You have what is known as the Windrush generation. So this is um, a large wave of Caribbean immigrants coming over to uh, England from the Commonwealth and places in the Caribbean, including Jamaica. Being invited. Being invited. That's the crucial point. In, in 1948. Point. And that they're officially recognized as British citizens. And this includes the generation that my dad's parents belong to. And they come over to work for and to represent the mother country. Look at you, good for nothing, noisy, stinking filth, lazy. You're everywhere. Jungle bunnies. This was a lovely area before you come here, lovely. Unfortunately, what they come to experience is racism, menial labor, systemic um, hostility. Systemic exclusion. Exclusion, being shut out of every area. Lord, bless me now and bless us if thou can be so pleased. So when my dad is born in 1959 in London, his parents are much more devout Christians. So Rastafarianism comes along and gives a whole different spin on religion and something to believe in. I remember speaking to Bob Marley of the Whalers, with whom I worked very closely, and once saying to him, why do you worship Ja Rastafari, when so many people say he's a dictator and a despot? And Bob looked at me and he said, you expect me to worship a white god? You see him there? Shut your fucking row up, you black. Bastards. The answer was obviously no. So it was a form of creating an identity in a hostile environment. And that plays out in this first generation story of Babylon. And I think the film is a very powerful document of people in that generation, like my own dad. He's 20 or so when this film comes out. And a funny anecdote, my dad hadn't seen the film. I programmed it a couple of years after it re-emerged. And I've seen my dad cry twice. Once was on my wedding day. The second time was when the credits rolled on Babylon because he had his life reflected back to him in a way that he'd never seen before. So I think the film is powerful on, on a representational level uh, and all the more powerful because you don't see the like of it. It feels like a real one-off. Once again we rise to meet the day and just sun does not shine. It's a film made by three white people. Gavrik Losi, the producer. Son of Joseph Son Losi, of Joseph who's Losi. blacklisted, so yep. he comes from a radical tradition. Um, Franco Rosso, who's born in Italy and comes to London and has this real uh, sensitivity for, for the immigrant experience, being one himself. Martin Stellman, the co-writer. Son of Jewish refugees. Martin Stellman had already established himself with Quadrophenia. And the story of the mods and the and rockers. That, that was the yeah. mods and the rockers. And this is the Rastas and the Babylon, which was also a nickname for the police, in fact. So the filmmakers of Babylon, even though they're, they're white filmmakers, they're coming at it from a place of curiosity, sensitivity, and real knowledge, and I think that really shows in the film. Yeah, I no more, I die. 